Hello, everybody. Welcome to Patron Week for, I guess, is this gonna, this will be up in August, yeah. Um, uh, this month's game is King of Dragon Pass. It won the poll by one vote, uh, beating out, um, what was the number two? FTL, I think. Uh, and this is a, a, I'm really excited about this. This is a game I've wanted, been wanting to do on this show for a while, actually. Um, this is a game that came out in 1999. It is right, and that this 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 splash screen answers some of my questions because I for some yes. reason have never heard of this game, and I had asked uh, as I was uh, looking through the screenshots on Image Search, uh, I said this game really looks like it could have been made either in like 1997 or so or like a year ago from a Kickstarter, but only one. I'm of actually those really two. surprised that you've never heard about this game, Red Skarn, because this game is based on the setting of Glorantha, which was created by Greg Stafford in, like, the 70s for, I think, a board game. And okay. then uh, out of that came the RPG systems RuneQuest and HeroQuest, and then eventually this right. video game. That's a neglected those... area of my scholarship. Are those Ben Grimm's? Uh, uh, the guy, the guy's kind of thing like armor. Now that you mention it, yeah. So the interesting thing about the setting this is based on is that um, when Greg Stafford went to make it, uh, he designed it based much more on mythology than on sort of um, faux medievalism. So the game has perhaps one of the most interesting magic systems I've ever seen. Um, so, we got kind of our, our lore dump backstory here, our, uh... Yep! Everybody knows how much you love these! Join us by the fire, tell us about the gods, um, anyway, so, uh, we joined forces with the storm god Orlanth. Uh, Orlanth was simply one of the many upstart rebellious gods bent upon the conquest of the world. Orlanth's unique contributions at the time were personal honor and a close kinship to other deities who seemed to be on the winning side. At least it's curt. Like I actually, I actually prefer that it's like just short as opposed to like elaborate yeah. and like flowery. And the other neat thing is we get to um, pick some stuff here. Um, so yeah, okay. After that, many that tribulations, adventures, and discoveries, Orlanth proved himself worthy of marrying Arnalda, the Earth Mother. The two of them created the marriage ring and established great harmony in the world through this sacred bonding. Your clan took part in the wedding ceremony. Most clans either whooped with Orlanth or learned a secret from Arnalda. A few uh, clans stood with Elmal, god of horses and the sun, as an honor guard. How did you prepare for the great marriage? So were we hanging out with the thunder god, the earth goddess, We was or, getting tipsy. Uh... Alright, uh... Well, if we were getting tipsy, like the only... Okay, yeah. Orlanth. All right. Oh, boy. So, Orlanth's struggle to remake the world was just beginning, and many other gods joined him in it. Orlanth undertook many wars of conquest. Uh, other, more peaceful deeds were just as important. Your most, or your earliest famous event was... Um, and then we've got a okay. whole yeah. bunch of these. Let's, let's send them um, to the, the hidden place and have them come back with many secrets. Uh, okay. Orlanth succeeded in remaking the world and thus began the golden era called the Storm Age. Orlanth's son, Vingot, uh, or Vincot, was a famous warlord during this time. Most people in the area were among his followers. Many people who would not have survived joined his tribes. He was a great organizer and helped the many scattered people form into new clans and tribes. Your clan was aided by, or was one of those aided by King Vingot. Uh, after you proved yourselves robust and capable of survival, Vincot placed a, rem uh, a remnant yeah, people yeah. under your protection. Blah, blah, blah. Um, do we make them slaves or adopted family? Adopted family. Seems like a better long-term plan. Yeah. That, that looks in insolubrious. Uh, so there were, th there were w which of the foes was our great foe here? Um, oh, we definitely need to fight the salty lord of the sea. <laughs> uh, 
So the Storm Age ended in disaster when the gods and the creatures of chaos came and destroyed oh, everything. Of fucking course it does, because there's always a disaster. That happens at the yeah. beginning of every single fantasy game ever made. There's like this big this isn't even the, where the gods and the fire... This isn't even fire. the disaster that's all that relevant to us. There's another disaster yeah. later on. Um, I like... Oh, okay. Anyway, gods died, darkness was bad, our clan was eh... Um, we turned into a bunch of, uh, hardy survivors. Um, Hert the King, uh, was the leader who emerged amid the turmoil of the darkness. Through combined efforts, Hert and his companions helped set the world into order again. He created laws. Balance. And, uh, yeah. We can, so war clans are better at raiding, peace clans are better at, like, uh, doing trade and stuff, and then balance allows you to kind of do both. That guy Finally, appears the sun to be trapped within the demon web pits. Um, first priest worked to reestablish links with the ancient deities, so they're basically waking up uh, the deities. Who was the first deity your clan helped to awaken? Uh, we can say, none, our ancestors are good enough, Cow or none, we retain mom. the worship what? of Cow our mom. living deity. Cow mom. Come on. Why would we not resurrect Orlanth if he's, like, the Allfather? Are you paying that much attention? Um, what, what did you say? You, like, that was, I'm sorry, I'm just bowled over, like, that was a surprisingly <laughs> perspicacious comment from Gamester. <laughs> like, like he's, he's really, is, like, following the scholar. thread of this and holding this, this setting up to its own internal logic. Uh, that, that just, that, I, I haven't remembered any of these names, like, past a second. <laughs> I'm really bad at this. Cow bomb. Let's do it. Who is, oh, um, Araldo, you mean? Okay. Yes. I, I thought Alpha. you were saying Chalma, and I was like, "What the hell? Is, that's not a that's not a god here." What? Anyway, that was thirteen hundred years ago. Um, all the gods are back. Everything's cool. Um, settled in a place called Heretland, named after the king who did the things with the laws. Um, and then about six hundred years ago, uh, a dragon showed up. And uh, Boy. asked if uh, we wanted to uh, hang out and share in their dragon knowledge. So, how did we feel about the dragons? Um, um, negative. We would never believe a dragon. That's amusing. No. Um, let's uh, I, let's I, just I, let's just go. Go ahead, Chris. I, I have no strong feel. I have no strong opinion on dragons one way or the other. Uh, they're a pretty neutral uh, thing. Let's go neutral. Let's go neutral on dragon. That'll, that'll help us pick us some swing states. That uh, doesn't look very wise neutral because, uh, um, so the people who uh, decided to go with dragons moved to this place called Dragon Pass, and they hung out for a while, and then about two hundred years ago, for no reason, the dragons ate everybody. Oh boy. I'm so sensing a paranoia of scenarios style. where we can lose before the game started. <laughs> I'm sensing one of those Warcraft style orc demon worshipping things. Suddenly they got well, possessed. Uh, you'll note the game the name of this game is called King of Dragon Pass. So as it turns out, um an usurper. Okay, yes, calling it's called King of Dragon Pharaoh, Pass, but how on earth, Josh, were we supposed to actually sit down and think through that that name might have some kind of special significance? When that was right. that that was one hundred percent a product from the, the dragons fantasy are probably not game important. generator, the, the king um, of Dragon Pass, Lord of the Crystal Sword, Kingdoms of Revelations. Anyway, this dude calling himself the Pharaoh uh, showed up and started a civil war. Uh, we didn't really like him. Unfortunately, we lost the civil war, so we decided to leave. Um, and we moved into Dragon Pass. I guess we didn't really lose the civil war so much as we decided we didn't want to fight our families. So, um, anyway, we moved to Dragon Pass. Uh settled down somewhere and uh, we decided how much land to claim. Uh, More than we needed want. to to grow. So so this is kind of a trade-off. Um, 
If you don't have a lot of land, then you can't really grow to, to accommodate more people. But if you have too much land, then it means you have, uh, you need like a lot more people to patrol it, which means that you might be more vulnerable to other clans raiding. I usually go with uh, like lots more. Yeah, two or three. Because it's pretty, yeah. I like the artwork. All right, so now we can we can change all these things. I think we'll leave the difficulty on easy, and game length doesn't matter because we're not going to see the end of it. Uh, and of course, our clan name uh, we can only go with the most Ray-Gild. appropriate uh, Iron, Iron Age clan name, which is uh... okay. That works too. Yeah. Our very um, French clan here. So, oh, uh, I love the fart like trumpets. Fart I love it. Trumpet. Yep. <laughs> we just said that simultaneously. <laughs> How did uh, we both go to our... fart trumpets? This is our <laughs> stead here. We can kind of see what we've got. We've got, um, you, know, you can hover over and see our herds and our nobles and stuff like that. Um, it's actually kind of why I, I prefer the original version of this game because the mobile re-release, which was later re-released on PCs, doesn't have like art like this. It's a much more like normal interface. Anyway, so this game is uh, a little weird. It's like one part resource and time management, one part visual novel, and like a dash of RPG. Okay. You have my attention. Yeah, I'm interested. Um, so we've got we've got this clan ring down here. Um, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, so so there these are our counselors. Basically, they um, uh, have some advice for us. And any screen that we have, we can click on these guys, and they will give us advice about stuff. And and interestingly, you know, these people will disagree based on uh, what god they worship and their temperament. Um, there are, there are some people who are called uh, tricksters on the court, and they will tend to give really stupid advice, but they can also get us out of like certain magical situations where a trickster would be helpful. Um, we've got uh, this sort of nebulous pool of magic here. We can allocate this to certain things to maybe make these go better. So I like to give some crops uh, magic. Diplomacy's good, not, not too. Uh, mysteries is good. We want to uh, divine some uh, some information from the gods. Uh, and trade sounds good. And maybe we'll put one in war. And we'll, we'll keep yeah, plus, the other two because we can use that in certain situations to to make things go better. So let's proceed. Plus, Rendell looks like she's going to kick our asses if we don't like put it in mysteries. <laughs> she's she's the leader of our clan, which is interesting. Um, normally, I'd probably go through here initially and reorganize the clan ring because it tends to give you one that's not super well optimized. Um, like, for example, um, the leader of our clan ring is is Vinga here, uh, or or not Vinga, uh, Rendella, who, um, and and we're we were an Orlanth clan, I think. No, uh, we we actually we went something with I want to say already. already. I don't, I don't know if that, seems... No, no, our, our prime deity is the one who, who we initially, like, during the wedding we hung out with, so we were hanging out with uh. the Lance, so that's our prime deity. Um, and our, our the leader of our clan ring worships uh, Vinga as her primary deity, which tends to make things a little bit harder, but we can roll with this for now. Um, so, I want to say something. Which is that already this game seems ahead of its time in the sense that it's, it's it's a strategy game from 1999 and what you usually get with this is like like we see here, lots of uh, elements of complexity that we can sort of juggle. But what tended to be absent was an element of polish where you could easily access these in the interface and where it was boiled down from something simulationist into something like gamist but that gives the feel of being simulationist. Stuff like, you know, being able to allocate checkboxes instead of, like, manually placing workers or instead of constructing things yeah. or, you know, or having the clan ring that, that can sort of stands in for, like, a, a more nuanced, like, driving of our clan structure. Having all the, the advisor sort of squares, portraits and stuff, you know, I know that's civilization also, but sort of having it on the same screen where you're 
uh, making these alterations instead of segregated somewhere else, like it often was in Civilization. Yeah, and, and it's important to note, there is no, like, we, we don't get to get, like, an overview map screen. Here Here's the map. Like, there's no, like, right. screen where we get to place stuff on a map and tell, okay, we're going to send some troops over here, stuff like that. That doesn't really, that's not how this game works. Like, this is all played through this screen primarily. So, um, we've got, um, I think, five or six seasons. And taking an action on any of these screens takes up half of a, a season. Um... So if we take two actions, it'll progress to the next season. Uh, and certain things happen in different seasons that make them good for doing certain things and bad for doing other things. So this is the C season. This is when people are sowing their crops. So if we take a bunch of people and go on a raid, uh, it will be unexpected that we would go on a raid during planting season, but also that's because that means that those people are not planting crops, which means our harvest is gonna suffer later on. Um, so we don't want to necessarily be mobilizing like a military force to go raiding or doing anything like that right now. Uh, so I think our, our initial move here should be, um, I think we should send some people to explore our, um, holding here. Uh, probably don't need to send too many people with you. Uh, this is XCOM style, where when you're ready, you just sort of press, like, okay, time, move forward. Um, sort of, but taking actions also causes time to move forward by default, so I'm gonna... Uh, interesting. Okay, so we found a, uh, a cave with uh, green-colored clay useful for high-quality pottery. That's cool. We um, can put all of our rupees I in it. I think we should Our also awesome. send a mission to get some trade routes going because that'll help our economy quite a bit. Um, kind of see the map here. We can see that we uh, apparently we're trading with um, with the Gray Dog Clan, which is interesting because I, I think we're they don't like us too much. It's interesting. Um, so Makes we're gonna send a like mission. Because uh, they're red. Oh, okay. Magenta. Red is people we yeah. really don't like. Uh, blue is people we do like. Uh, let's send a mission to the Gerunding tribe because they're neat. We'll send uh, five weapon thanes and maybe 15 footmen. Footmen, okay, so weapon thanes are our professional army, uh, so to speak. They're nobles right. that are armed, basically. They don't do farming, they are yeah. full time warriors. Uh, a, a footmen traditional warrior are peasants class we've taken. Yeah, pe footmen are peasants we've taken uh, to off of their fields to and armed them to go and fight. They're not nearly as strong as right. weapon thanes, but they make up the bulk of armies. It, uh, so it's it's knights and levies. March this way. Or samurai and art. Let's archers. establish a route. And we're going to send... We can choose who we want to... Notably, our clan is bigger than the people on the clan ring. We've got a bunch of uh, different, like, leading people who can help out. Uh, this guy's bargaining is excellent, so that's a good uh, person to send. And that progressed time, which means we get a random event. Um... Most Doral, an accomplished holy warrior of Elmal, comes to your clan looking for aid in a great hero quest. Our people are cursed by fighting and dissension. Hendrik, you fight Herolinders, uh, people in Dragonplast, blah, 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 blah. Um, I wish to go to the realm of the gods so that Orlanth may fight me. This, this guy's going to go fight Orlanth. Basically, uh, with discount that. Thor. With that thing in his um, hands. Yeah. Um, then people will be loyal and united again. I need your magic to help me. Okay, so we can like look at these and decide what to do here. Um, and we can talk to our, our counselors here and they will highlight different things that they say to do. So our leader says, popularity is such that our neighbors would sooner follow the advice of a one-legged hop toad. Uh, so maybe we would So recruiting other clans is unlikely. Yeah. Well, maybe we help them out and our popularity goes up. Uh, but also recruiting other clans right now, you know, not very good. Uh, our magic. This seems like a really them. stupid idea. 
Um, these guys don't seem to have a whole lot. Uh, everybody seems to say either I don't know or do it. Except this guy. Which is stupid. It, yeah, it's like it's like saying like it's like if you're living in an area and you don't really like your landlord, and suddenly a guy like with a drinking straw comes over and is like, "Hey, if you give me twenty bucks to buy more drinking straws, I can finish building my drinking straw catapult, which I'll use to assassinate the landlord, and we can all share his money and live rent free." I, so this is actually like, kind of a thing in this setting where um, under undertaking hero quests. Is, is something that you do to, like, gain the favor of the gods, gain boons and stuff. Um, right, but this, uh, and this we is can a hero quest to fight somewhere. the gods. Yeah, yeah. well, specifically Orlanth, and it's kind of a big ritualized thing. Um, so what do we want to do He's an accomplished holy warrior, I guess. He is. He looks very accomplished, um, obviously. I, I'd call him yeah. foolish and kick him out, because you like can't that, fight. That. I mean, okay. Let's let's think about this in RPG logic. We're a quest giver, and the main character just walked up to us and said he's going on a quest to go fight a, an end boss. Do we help him, or do we say, mm, no, you can pound sand and go buy your weapons from the trader like everybody else? That doesn't even look like that's how you hold like that he sword needs to buy a weapon. It's not a sword. Yeah. Does this look like it's long enough to be a sword to you? Okay, he's like holding a, the paper the or the letter opener wrong. So, <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, if he does beat Orlanth, he can brag that he killed Orlanth with a fucking letter opener. Yep. Um, uh, it uh, sounds like you're saying, uh, no. I kind of. Well, I, would... I mean, we're not actually trying to win here. We're trying to put on a show, so fucking do well, it, obviously. Oh, okay. I say your All idea right. is foolish. We did as he asked and lent our ritual support to his magic minus ten. Oh dear God. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I hope that pays off for us. You guys just screwed us. <laughs>